Domestic artwork intersects with many other genres, but I'm most interested in the way that domestic art and identity are connected. The evolution of domestic artwork from craft to fine art is very interesting to me. This intersection is present in the very beginning when, in the 1960s, domestic artworks were linked to women's identity, expression, and technical skill. During women's civil movements, there was a shift in how domestic contributions were recognized. What was deemed traditionally women's work and devalued by the artwork, mainly by men, the feminist movement also sought to gain recognition and validity for domestic art and craft. Domestic artwork also served as an economic need for many women at the time, selling quilts, blankets, tapestries. The current celebration of domestic art in contemporary art stems from the work done by women to uplift and maintain value created by craft and domestic art in society. In present day, domestic work is not exclusively delegated to women, but many different genders explore and use this medium to express their stories. Let's look at two artists who worked in domestic mediums throughout their career, Bob Boyer and an emerging artist, Hannah Epstein. Boyer and Epstein's textile work are very visually different. Boyer's blankets are looking back on the colonial history in Canada and try to reconcile how the past has impacted the present. Boyer's quilts from his series Blanket Statements are deeply connected to his heritage. They are personal and political. When you look at them, they are abstract, but also gruesome in some ways. His stretched raw hide piece titled The Death and Life of Private Standing Below Elk. The splatters of red paint on the border show up in some of Boyer's other quilts, like Remember Nathan Crazy Bull's Post. They represent the blood, death, struggle, and war. In the death and life of Private Standing Below Elk, it is symbolic of the Korean War, but also the blanket references wider issues related to indigenous struggles like identity, life, and culture. As mentioned earlier, Boyer is using his quilt work and blankets to convey a narrative and a message. In Boyer's other works like A Government Blanket Policy, which is about the intentional spread of smallpox by Canadian government, the functionality of the blanket is also used as an allegory in the historical context of colonialism. When looking at Epstein's hook rug tapestries and sculptures, they can be described as neo-folk, obtaining this reputation by using references to folklore and relating them back to current social media, meme culture, pop culture in general. There are a lot of interesting monsters that come up in her rugs and tapestries, with a strong focus on how we're supposed to make sense of and stand apart in the new internet age. In the exhibition, Kill Your Captors, the rug SpaceX, installed alongside other monstrous rugs, is a reference to pop culture and the relationship between Grimes and Elon Musk. Taking place in 2020 at the height of the pandemic, there were social and environmental concerns that arose from onlookers on social media about their relationship. Starting from the top down, there's a logo for SpaceX above Grimes, holding two pistols, and underneath there's text that reads, Mass Murder. The image of Grimes in relation to the cover of her album that was coming out at the time called Miss Anthropocene. There was a character of her for the narrative of the album that was basically an agent of mass destruction. Epstein draws a comparison between Grimes as this fictional character and the real version while she's in a relationship with Elon Musk. Grimes being associated with Elon and her contributions to SpaceX while knowing the ecological effects and ethical concerns about the colonization of Mars were hot and heated points on social media. The irony of creating a fictional character destroying the planet versus the very real effects that Elon Musk's companies have on the planet and, the, and his goal to leave Earth to colonize Mars. 
Epstein describes them as mass murdering billionaire art adjacent villainous forces, which could be hard to disagree with. Even though Boyer and Epstein's styles of artwork are very different and seem to explore very different topics, they are connected through domestic arts ties to identity and influences of history. Boyer is a Métis Cree artist and uses his personal experience as an indigenous man to paint representation that he can identify with. He uses his artwork to inform and seek understanding in his world and community. Boyer's quilt series is challenging, reconciling with a history of murderous colonization against indigenous communities across so-called Canada. It's something not to be forgotten and must be learned from. Epstein's work holds a different meaning in relation to Boyer's quilts. They are less directly personal and depict general themes of technology in the internet age. Identity is present through representations of imagined monsters and folklore. Perhaps a warning, or to find solace with something to identify with in a sea of binary code. While looking at these artworks, the sense of the everyday is also present in how it connects us to identity. The everyday that Boyer may have experienced is largely different from Hannah Epstein's You know, for one thing, they're separated by generation, and Boyer passed away. Epstein is still living and showing her work. I think it could be also argued that both of their styles of work from these time periods, they would not exist. They would not hold as much impact as they do. They would not resonate as much with their viewers if they did not stem from these traditional practices that originate through familial connection. And it's really interesting to see the differences of similarities between the artworks of Boyer, who are created with an indigenous perspective and subject and historical perspective, that were created in the 1980s and up until the late 90s. Also during that time that Boyer was creating these quilts and having exhibitions about them for the next, you know, 10 plus years after he made them in this series, it's a very different political landscape. There's a stronger connection in contemporary art to look back on the past like he was doing and try to reconcile with a really horrible history that Canada has been founded on. Epstein similarities to Boyer in that her artwork was also passed down through generation and was a result of growing up on the East Coast and being really into and consuming TV and advertising and really vibrant media was constantly being pushed at her while she was growing up. It's interesting to see how being kind of secluded, locked in doors on the East Coast and the artwork that she's making now is really a reflection of that childhood influence and a familial influence for her art making, which are two really interesting byproducts of what can be found in the domestic art genre. Domestic art and identity really illuminated through the ways that artists look into the past, pull things from history in order to reconcile and deal with the issues that constantly come up in the present now and will continue to come up in the future.